Hello, this is Cho of the Shiny Colors Discord. Welcome to another episode of The Shiny Review. Today we've got three cards to talk about. We have the new Produce SSR for Mikoto. We also have the Support SSR for Hinana. And we'll be doubling back to the Event SSR for Madoka as part of the Pokari Sweat collab. Keep in mind that all three of these cards are limited in their own way. For Madoka, once the missions are over, you won't be able to get additional copies of her. And once this banner is over, you won't be able to get Mikoto or Hinana outside of a rerun or paid-only banners. And considering that reruns have kind of vanished, yeah, good luck. Let's go ahead and start off, of course, with Mikoto. I think Mikoto's animations are pretty alright. I don't really have a ton to comment on them, and the visual imagery of the fourth SSR, especially for the Fests, is very strong. There's a lot going on here in terms of connection and overall, like everything really with she's this has been a very strong card for a lot of people to talk about so on that standpoint very high tier now as for what she does she is a pure vocal unit starting off her appeals her initial appeal is a vocal 3.5 to all judges that reduces your current mental by 20 percent then raises your vocal upwards of 100 percent based on how much hp you lost this buff lasts for three turns if we take a look at the scaling here if you are able to shave off more than 1,000 mental using that 20% reduction, you get the 100% buff. 875 gets you around the 75% range, 750 is around 50%, so on and so forth. So, make sure you have a very high health build so that your 20% cut will get you the buff that you need. The 4-star version of the appeal is a vocal 4.5 to all judges, reduces your current mental by 25%, and scales up to a vocal 150% buff equal to however much you lost for 3 turns. The scaling, again, is the same, just with different numbers. So, 875 health gets you around 112%, 750-75%. You get the idea. Her memory appeal, when maxed out, is a vocal 50% buff for 4 turns that follows up with a vocal 4.0. This is pretty okay. Not super strong, but considering that it's a turn 2 memory appeal at best, it's pretty consistent. Especially if you're using Nichika that buffs her appeals by any sort of amount, so... There's some certain value to that, but I think realistically this card is a cannon through and through. You're putting her in the vocal position almost every time. So, for her passive, she actually has a lot of them that are pretty good. First off, she has a vocal 60% passive at 1 star, which is that you just have to have Mikoto on your team, which she's Mikoto, so you're going to always have this, has a 30% chance to activate once. Her 2 star passive is a vocal 100% up if your mental is 74% or lower, has a 30% chance to activate up to twice. Then she has 3 different passives at 4 stars. The first is a vocal 85% up that ignores interest as long as there's at least one member of Antika on your team, and has a 15% chance to activate twice. The second is a vocal 100% up with a 50% raise to your attention if you have at least one or more knock chill members, 15% up to twice. Lastly, a vocal 80% and memory charge of 20% if Luca is on your team, 30% chance to activate once. Stat uncaps are about as you'd expect, a total of 400 vocal additional once you get her maxed out. This Mikoto is honestly kind of interesting, and it diverges a lot from the standard She's playstyle of Mikoto buffs Nichika, Nichika buffs Mikoto, and then they kind of just keep trading that back and forth until they get really strong. So, this feels a lot more contemporary in terms of actually how you build her, and offers some unique flexibilities as maybe you want interest ignore, so you bring along an Antika member, maybe you want the interest up because you're running more interest-based builds, so you run Knock Chill. Maybe you just want the memory charge, so you're going to include Luca on your team. A lot of cool ideas. Some of these feel a little metagamey. The ability to ignore interest definitely feels like a weird metagame call out. So make of that what you will. And then, of course, you have to figure out what piece you're actually using from Antika or Knock Chill in order to make this work. So that's also a whole other call you have to make. So. I don't know, it's a little interesting, it's kind of complex in the sense that there's not really a crazy standout card. Maybe you could run, say, like MSC Hinana or MSC Madoka if you needed a knock chill piece. That is an option. Vocal Antika, I guess it's really just like Twikole Kiriko, really. 
And then Luca is Luca. You either run her first SSR or you don't. Because of the fact she doesn't really buff Nichika and doesn't really exemplify anything that Nichika 4 wanted to do, but Nichika 4 also is not really built for this card either, it creates this interesting split path where you can choose to focus in on either having Nichika as your center or having this Mikoto as your vocal position unit just doing a bunch of damage. And it's led to a very divided build style between the teams, which I think is interesting because we haven't had that in a while. So there's a lot of ways you can optimize this Mikoto specifically that I think is cool and worth looking at. This card is a very easy S in my mind. I could maybe see this card being a little weaker, but I think everything that she's got is very consistent. And the ability to be as flexible as she is, is very good. So, now we can talk about Hinana. So Hinana is a pure visual unit. Her masteries include Unit Mastery SP, which is plus 10 at level 70, plus 6 at level 50. Has access to Room Mastery, which is a very high plus 10 at level 80 is plus 7 at level 75, and plus 4 at level 60. So that means at max, she has a 10% chance to level up a room if she's in it, which is very good. She has Visual Stay Mastery at level 75, only one instance of that. And then she has Visual Mastery Stamina, which is plus 5 at level 80, or plus 3 at level 65. As for the rest of what she does, her appeals scale on how much reaction you have. If we take a look at the first one, the 3.5 requires 100% reaction, or more, and drops down pretty significantly with each percentage of every 25% that you're missing. Then we have the 5.0 when you max her out. Same deal, you need to have 100% reaction. They also raise your reaction by 20% for two turns or three turns respectively. For the passives, visual 50% up at one star if you have Hinana on your lineup, 20% chance up to three times. Two-star passive is a visual 130% up if it is turn three or later, and Hinana is in your skill history. 20% chance to activate twice. Finally, a visual 100% passive if you are in the visual position, 20% chance to activate once. Hinana is pretty solid, and is certainly built for visual knock chill specifically. Most of what she's trying to do does not benefit other current visual teams, and you won't find much use of her 2-star passive, which is the cornerstone of her build without her around. It's good to see more dedicated support builds that don't become insanely good for everybody else. I personally have become kind of tired of getting supports that just feel like this catch-all, I'm the best for this attribute, I'm the best for that attribute. I like the idea of, I'm a really good support for my team specifically, and that's it. Because it gives more identity to the team itself, rather than just, oh, everybody's running Daikichi, or everybody's running Colorful Chiyuki with Uma Tenka. As for the grades, A plus to S minus, I think for sure, with Hinana. Maybe a little lower if you're trying to run her outside of Nocchill, but in a dedicated Nocchill lineup, this card is really good. Very solid card. Now jumping over a few screens, we have the new Madoka as part of the Pokari Sweat collaboration. This card is not very good. So first off, she has a Dance 3.5 appeal that scales based on reaction, so just like the Hinana, except one major problem is that this card provides no reaction whatsoever. You're completely dependent on other cards to get you the reaction you need in order to get said buff. The only really notable passive that she has is a Dance 50% up if your mental is 50% or higher, and it has a 20% chance to activate once. Her masteries are not particularly good. They're kind of average-ish, not even average. They're very below average, even among the event SSRs. So realistically, you're only getting this card specifically because you want this dance 50% passive. And that's pretty much it. I think the card is not super worth it for building purposes. It's, again, just for the sake of having a dance 50% passive on a free card is cool, but that's really all that this card has going for it other than it's the collaboration with Pokari Sweat. I would get copies if you can, but I wouldn't stress about getting this card maxed out as soon as possible, unless you really are just hurting for a passive like this. So that will do it for the video today. Thank you so much as always for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to let me know in the comments. 
and I will see you next time for the next shiny review, which is going to be a lot. We've got at least four cards to talk about off the top of my head between the upcoming collaboration with Oshinoko, which gives us produce SSRs for, I believe it's Ruby and Kana, and a support SSR for Memcho. And we also have a permanent SSR banner coming up with Kaho as the produce card. So of course I'm going to be talking about that. So with that all being said, again, thank you so much for watching. I've been Cho. Have a wonderful rest of your day.